go to work. Hey guys, welcome to vlog number five. This vlog is slightly different because I'm going to structure it slightly different and it's coming a little late. You know why it's coming a little late? Because I picked up my paparoo. She came from California. Her name's Mabel and she's amazing. She's going to be regular to the channel now. Um, also, the reason why I haven't uploaded is because I've been doing like in-processing type stuff and that takes up a lot of my day and it's very boring. So, another way that this vlog is slightly different, structuring it different. Knocking out all the cinematic sequences in the very beginning and at this time, huh, we're going to move into a rant. Well, really, it's me complaining a little bit and praising a little bit the car community on YouTube. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Actually. car youtuber TJ Hunt TJ Hunt is an extremely interesting case just because he I really like his content I watch every single one of his videos uh, but recently there's been a slight shift not in the quality of the videos themselves but in the content um, specifically I saw the biggest change uh, when he actually acknowledged all the hate that he was getting for getting a rep wide body kit which I think that it's his choice that's fine but when you acknowledge someone else criticizing you um, it's just it's stupid like you're giving them power and you're showing them that you're giving them power um, so I don't agree with that also what I don't agree with is over the past month or so uh, pretty much all of his content has switched from uh, like functional stuff to aesthetic stuff um, and it's not eh, it's not even the last month it's the last couple weeks uh, and I hopefully it changes it probably will change back to more functional stuff for cars but it's almost like these past couple weeks have been a slow transition to we're going to do this because for the sole purpose of making our cars look good and like I get it the whole point of the Tron BRZ was to look good which it looks great if you ask me um, but the whole point of your channel at least in my eyes as a subscriber isn't to make your car look good it's to enjoy the car community enjoy your own car make it faster make it better uh, and I get it looking better as part of that but there's this last couple weeks have really been saturated with making your cars look better. So that's my gripe on TJ Hunt. That dude in blue. Uh, one of the biggest uh, car reviewers. I say he is on the same. So you have people like Saab, Saab Kyle 09, I think. I, I don't watch him, unfortunately. He's a huge car YouTuber as well, uh, except he just does reviews. Whereas that dude in blue does reviews and then also vlogs and like 
shows us his life in the car community, which is super dope if you ask me. But at the same time, um, ugh, you, you need to do more stuff on your own. I got really excited when you started doing stuff on your own with that 240, but it seems like it's, this is probably the wrong way to put it, but it seems like you got into the hard bits of modifying your car and you said, screw it, I have money, I'm going to go ahead and have other people do it for me just because my time would be better off spent uh, reviewing other people's cars, which you, you do great reviews. You're film, it obviously shows that you have a filming background um, and like a cinematography of your car reviews are off the charts. Like it's insane how great shots you get. But at the same time, at, there's a point where we, as subscribers and viewers, almost get tired with watching car reviews because even though it's an entirely different car, it's the same thing over and over again. And we want to see uh, the people that we like. And it's not that we want to see them struggle, but we want to see them put in effort and try things that are out of their comfort zone. So uh, this is this is pretty much me pleading to you to start working on that uh, that drift coupe uh, and to do that work yourself. If you mess up, you mess up, you're fine. You can just sell the car, get a new one, count it as a loss, have a shop build it. But with your 240 as it is right now, that's shop built, which is fine, but it's almost like you let down the uh, subscribers just because we liked seeing the first few episodes and then the episodes disappeared for seven months and boom, the car is entirely done. Uh, whereas we would all, I, I think from my perspective, I would extremely like seeing the entire process, all the mess ups, all the hard bits, all the annoying bits, all the mundane bits of putting that car together. So that is that dude in blue. Also, David, I like your name. Smurfin WRX, aka Mike Nguyen. You are the man that got my YouTube on its initial feet. You got me from, I believe it was nine subscribers, all the way up to 110 subscribers over the course of about a month. Uh, actually, no, it was more like two, three weeks. And, uh, as of right now, that video, the built and blacked out Civic SI, has over 6,000 views. So it's by far the most viewed uh, video on my YouTube. Which, thank you so much for that, but you're not safe. I feel like your content has, well, it's, it's a vlog, so pretty much anyone's life can turn into the same thing if you have a lot of like secret projects that are going on so we can only see things and for me at least it got to the point where I could almost predict exactly what was going to happen in every single video before it happened um, and you got into a niche similar to how like Casey Neistat was saying that he was falling into a niche even though like from my perspective it was just a pattern it wasn't quite just repetitive every time but with you uh i feel like the vlogs have almost gotten to the point of like okay i know exactly what's going to happen when it's going to happen what's going on um and so this is my plea as a subscriber to you to change up that content a bit because if you change it up then i feel like all your subscribers will one get thrown off a little bit uh and two they'll all want to continue following you because you gain this little aspect of being unpredictable and spontaneous and I think that's something that's becoming a lot harder to find in YouTube these days because people find their niche and they stick to it. You found your niche in your vlogs and you've stuck to it and it's created like a repetitive nature to your vlogs. Smurf and WRX, I, I don't know what's wrong, I'm in the notification squad, but somehow I'm not getting notifications from videos all that much, even though you are uploading a bunch of stuff. 
Also, I'm probably going to be making a trip to California in the 240. Uh, if you see this video, which you probably won't, just leave a comment and uh, I'll try to bring the 240 by. It started life as a salvage title car with a non-functioning uh, KA24E S13 and pretty soon it will be all ready to go. Although do not look at my previous vlogs or else you'll see exactly how far I have to go before that thing's done. All right, so that is that. All right, yeah, that's, that's Mike Nguyen. Version vehicles and JR Garage actually. You guys, first, oh, I don't like you guys. A lot of people like you guys. I'm I'm subscribed to both you guys. But there's just this level of arrogance that goes along with your content. One makes me laugh a lot. Um, but two, it like I I know that you're genuinely like that. And I I get bundled into like the hater category. Uh, just because I know that while it's possible for me to get to the point where I can drive cars and have like Lamborghinis like you guys do, um, it's almost, the way that you present yourself is very professional, but it has an undertone of superiority. Uh, maybe that's my fault for seeing it that way, but ugh. your your content is funny to me, but not because it's designed to be funny. So that is my little segment on the supercar YouTubers besides Salamandrin. Salamandrin, in my opinion, isn't even a car YouTuber. He, he has a segment, Let's Talk About Car Show. That's dope. But to me, he's a Hollywood personality without the Hollywood rec name recognition of title sequence and credits. So that's... Like, I think he's funny, but he also tries to be funny. He's like a comedian. Um, so I, I really like his content. And the way that he presents himself, he's not bragging almost about his cars. Um, or the cars that he drives. So that, that really makes his content slightly more enjoyable to me than uh, the other two rich... We'll, we'll call them rich kid car YouTubers. Um, of JR Garage and Vehicle Virgins. So that is Solomondrin and somehow tying back into JR Garage and uh, Vehicle Virgins. Don't get me wrong, I really like all their content, but I just, the attitudes, the undertones and the attitudes sometimes from those two, uh, they're locales. Um, you guys are freaking awesome in my opinion, because you show what it's like to be part of a car club. Um, it really is like this brotherhood. I don't want to say it's a gang, because it's not a gang, but still. It's this camaraderie, and you're willing to help your buddies out. Shoot, I was, when I was part of Canadian County Car Club, I still technically am, I was driving out right around an hour and 20 minutes every single weekend. Uh, going through tolls and everything just to make it down to meets and hang out with people. Sometimes it wouldn't be even be a meet. It would just be like, oh, uh, a couple of us are going to be working on the Tibby, for example. Uh, that's Tiburon for y'all. Um, and Locals really captures that essence of the car community where it's like, you're, you're just a bunch of brothers and sisters just hanging out and... Uh, doing your thing so keep up the good work I am jealous of all the imports though screw the 15 year law oh no it's 25 oh that's even worse Ricer, Miata, Haggard, Garage bunching them up they're different I know their content's very different but the fact that there are northeastern uh, car youtubers that are kind of they're, they're revolved around doing things the cheap way. That gives them this interesting look. We'll say it's an interesting look. Where, like, 
Uh, Haggard Garage recently has become more and more legit. Ricer Miata always is... Chris Rutnick is an interesting character. Just because he, uh... He works in... Well, at least he has access to, like, a legit shop with, like, legit cars. But he just gets these beater cars and he just tries to kill them, really. He's strangling his cars into submission. And that's the same way that Haggard Garage used to be, in my opinion. Uh, and their personality is great, uh, which is why their fans, the, the fans that they attract are the type of fans that aren't afraid to shamelessly plug them in other car YouTubers' videos, which I absolutely love. All right, B is for freaking build. Oh my gosh, I love this channel. I was, I am very proud of this, even though no one will see it. I was one of the original 100 subscribers to that channel uh, before they even really had any traction at all. Because I was looking into getting a BRZ uh, salvage and building it up. And pretty much at the exact time, same time I was thinking about that, they ended up getting a torn up BRZ and building that up. So I was one of the original 100 subscribers back when you guys were clearly wasted every single episode. And uh, I feel like you guys have just generally been getting slightly more and more sober up until the point where you're at now. And oh, I could I could watch B is for build every single day. The reason why I love it is because it's a very no frills attached look at like Hey, look, I'm not even that great of a car guy. The first time that I ever heard you say, uh, call yourself Tuner, was two videos ago. Up until then, like, you were just like a regular guy going through and doing your own thing, uh, trying to build up cars. And the only gripe that I have with BS for Build is no one sees the exact costs. Like, if you could do an episode that shows the exact cost that went into every single car, uh, including like the ch shop costs for rent and like appliances. Then people could start to understand why not everyone is doing exactly what you're doing. Uh, but besides that, like, be as for build, I don't really have any gripes for you. Keep up the good work, put out more content. That's my only complaint. The Stradman and Evan Shanks, I am both Categorizing you guys in the same genre, really, subgenre of the car community. You guys have really built your entire channels up around your cars. Uh, Evan, you've addressed this before. You didn't want to be known as the, man, what are you doing? The car YouTuber for, known for your SDI. Uh, you, you were addressing how you didn't want the channel to be associated with the STI. Um, but at this point, it's kind of, it happened. Uh, I really like your personality, um, Evan, but at the same time, you, by addressing it, you helped establish slightly more, uh, the fact that your channel was, uh, associated specifically with that SDI. Stradman, you're an interesting character as well, but... All I got to say is, if you didn't have that Lamborghini, I'm not sure how big of a YouTuber you would be today. <sighs> Muscle versus Tuner, car comedians, uh, you guys are mm, good stuff. My only complaint is I want to see more stuff of you like working on cars. But besides that, it's pretty primo. Pretty primo. Review, uh, review a Prius. That's, that's what I want to see you guys do. Engineering explained. You are a beast. You are so smart. I hope I can be as smart as you one day. You, in my opinion, are on the same tier as people like Mike or Michael from Vsauce. Um, and smarter every day. Because you just bring this level of intelligence 
to the car community on YouTube that I didn't even think was possible. You understand all these crazy concepts that even me, having studied like systems engineering and looking a lot into technical papers on cars, sometimes I struggle like extremely hard with this stuff and you manage to like research it for like a week and just come out with a crazy video that explains it in perfect detail with crappy drawings that I can still somehow understand and seeing how I can understand it, I'm sure everyone else can too. So, absolutely love your stuff, Engineering Explained. Uh, I just hope that we can see more videos of your S2K. Rob Ferretti, Super Speeders Rob. You are the OG YouTuber. I can't really say anything without mentioning Rob Dom as well though, because he is also semi-OG YouTuber. He's like the rotary spokesperson of YouTube for the car community. But, uh, Rob Ferretti, you are honestly one of the people that got me into cars way back in like 2000, 2000, we'll just say 2000. When you came out with those original like 4 GT race things, that was like, I was hooked on those immediately. I was like, I, I don't want to get in car chases, but I want to build up a fast car just like that. Rob Dom, since I already mentioned you, you need to put out more content, man. You need to put out more content. I just, oh, oh you f I feel like you're leaving us hanging. I always want to see more road reaction. And I understand it takes a lot of work, but shoot, if I can make up a freaking vlog without actually accomplishing anything in my 240, which everyone freaking has these days, someone with a four rotor uh, Mazda RX-7 should easily be able to just walk around the car and say, look, it's my car again. And I would watch every second of it. All right, last couple, I promise. Mighty Car Mods, you got <laughs> massive. Comedian, uh, I, I guess it's also in semi in the uh, realm of comedian car channel, but you guys, you do have a do-it-yourself image to yourselves. Uh, the way that you go about your videos is amazing. Uh, I have no gripes with you guys, except for you have way too much pull in the car community, and that means you say something, it immediately becomes big. So, when you did the 180SX, I feel like I immediately just lost all credibility because I had like a couple of comments say, Oh, you just did this because Mighty Car Mods is doing 180SX again. Although, I do have to say that you guys had your car running perfectly a lot sooner than mine because mine still isn't running perfectly. And I started my YouTube bits on 240 about three months before you guys did your 180SX build and my car still freaking broken and yours was done in like November or whatever. All right, so that is my complaint about my car mods. You took my stride, but you guys are awesome. Oh, if, honestly, if anyone that I freaking talked about in this vlog comments on this video, I'm probably gonna lose it. I'm just gonna grab the GoPro which I'm, film, I'm filming on a Hero 3 Plus because I'm broke. Um, it's the black edition, so I wasn't broke before. I got it back in like 2015, 2014, that I turned broke. But yeah, uh, that's just some random plug. This is falling apart. If anyone comments on this, I'm just gonna lose my crap. And Okay, last one, I think. Taylor Ray. Uh, I think, Taylor, you're probably the fastest that I've seen someone blow up ever like on YouTube eh, rice gum blew up a little bit faster but you're the fastest anyone in the car community has really blown up uh, I don't want to attribute that entirely to Adam LZ uh, oh actually speaking of Adam LZ semi car youtuber originally bikes moving a lot into cars now I really like his content he has it's almost like he had uh, practice for like five years as a BMX YouTuber that's led to him being a car YouTuber and it really translates well and I love everything that he does especially in the drift community I'm really big into drifting if you can't tell by my car choice back into Taylor Ray though uh, I feel like a lot of the reason why you got that initial pull 
was because of Adam LZ, but uh, the way that you have gone about everything, um, it's not like you have all the subscribers you do because of Adam LZ. You have them because you deserve them. Because uh, anyone can get the subscribers, but keeping them, that's the hardest part. So, I, I love the content that you're putting out, man. Keep putting out that content. Uh, you're like, you're a weird hybrid of Adam LZ and uh, B is for build. Because you're, you're the B is for build of the, the Miata world, I gotta say that. And I don't think you realize how big you are. Because uh, compared to At Adam, you're not like huge or anything. But at the same time, for the YouTube uh, car community, you're one of the biggest, for sure. Which is why you're on this list that no one's probably ever gonna see. All right, this one, okay, the not the only reason. The reason why I'm talking about this guy is because he deserves a lot more subscribers, and that is because Daddy. Uh, he puts in so much work into his YouTube, yet for some reason he only has like 7,000 subscribers. And I. I feel like, I don't know why I think this, but I feel like Because Daddy is one of those channels uh, that actually watches my videos. So even though this is probably going to be towards the end of the vlog, like if anyone's going to comment on this video, I'm guessing it's Because Daddy. Just because he's like one of the most genuine people, that, and you can tell that through his vlogs. And like, I really hope that someday I meet him. If you want to do a collab, bro, just hit me up. Um, and I just, honestly, like, the way that I'm trying to structure my vlogs and, like, go about my YouTube, I'm trying to be myself, but the reason why I'm trying to be so much of myself and not, like, cater to any specific person is because that's exactly what Because Daddy is doing. Because race car? No. Because Daddy. Also, your kid's so cute. So cute. Yep. That was weird. Because Daddy, you're awesome. You deserve a lot more subscribers. Keep working. I shout you out. I'm sure in no time you'll be at the point with like five bajillion subscribers. Shout out to Oh Yeah About That. I don't know why you watch my channel, but you're freaking amazing. I love your videos as well. You deserve more subscribers. The fact that you have a GTR just throws me off every single time. I just see it in the garage like, what? But thank you so much for all the help that you give me. Uh, thank you for shouting me, not shouting me out, but directing me to John Widmer. Um, and I, I don't know. I hope that you blow up too. Uh, yeah, um, this, this video is falling apart right now. All right. So that's been this vlog slash rant, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's probably one, maybe two people that are going to see this just because this has turned out to be such a long video. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like the video. Uh, if you leave a comment, especially if you're one of the guys that I mentioned in this video, I'm just going to flip. I'm going to flip my lid. I'm going to grab Mabel. I'm going to give her a huge hug. And then I'm going to like grab the GoPro, start filming my reaction. Speaking of GoPros, uh, I'm looking into getting a new camera. It's like slightly better or whatever, uh, but I need your guys' suggestions. So if anyone can comment, um, that would be amazing. And then, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I think that's it for this video. I will see you guys next week. Two separate systems. Peace. The sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monoro recording.